for the last three months, I've been working on the biggest game I've ever made. In a bit of time, I started it with a lonely island with a random yellow cube floating in midair just to turn them into not really lonely cubes. This one is the kind of games you'd play with your friends on one phone if you have friends. Ahem. You both get a joystick on each side of the screen. But here comes a difference from all the double player games you know, you can build. Even more, switch between shooting and building. Once spawned in this weird blocky world, you look for chests to get your weapons. Why don't you carry them with you? I mean, it doesn't make sense now, but it's obviously a part of a bigger plan. If you look very closely, you see I'm spawned on a map. Wow. I first wrote a primitive system to be able to draw your own maps in pixelated images. But how was I going to make hundreds of levels? As an indie. In a bit of time. So, I have two ways. First, to stop sleeping at night and to work on the levels for a month. Or, you all know the answer? Random generation. Basically, what random generation does is it takes a random purling noise, scales it up, and turns whiter regions into walls and darker regions into caves. The results are really different every time you try it. I definitely didn't have any bugs making this one. Wait, did that player just double? Speaking about caves, everything gotta be out of stone. Right? Haha, <laughs> no, it's grass. But why not stone? Just when I was making caves, I once needed to cross a river while I was in a forest. It was winter and minus 6 celsius outside, so what's the most logical thing you would do? Of course, cross this river on foot. But when I was on the other side, my shoes fully wet, I stepped on a stone and slipped in the water. That's why I'm officially offended on stones and didn't include any in this game. Also, I'm working with an artist on it. He's a cool guy, make sure to check him in the description. Now I need to add a menu to the game. It's mainly for colors and skins, so you can customize the player before the battle. You can combine different colors and different skins to make your player stand out, I guess. You're probably wondering, how did I not lose focus and finish the whole game? And if you're not, you'd better start wondering. Now. So, for the whole time of the development, I've been tracking my whole progress. I trade both online and offline. First, I used Microsoft To Do to track all the tasks. However, I found that the handwritten one in a notepad works slightly better. I've been writing my goals for the day every single morning and then checking what I have done every evening. When working on a long project, I found this stuff really useful to do. Now, when I'm trying out my maps... Wait, is it a rocket launcher? Uh, um, but if we are already talking about weapons, let me show you what we have. There's a wizarding wand, uh, which creates some kind of a force field around you. You come close to the enemy and... Uh, I also have a TNT and unless you live in a cave, you know what it does. You get it? We have a few more weapons, like the portal gun, which switches you and the other player, or a sound gun, which you can use to shout at your friends. Is it just me, or you also like to shout at your friends? Wait, is it just me? Guys? To make the player not stuck between two blocks, I found this thing called Composite Collider. Basically, what it does is it turns all single block colliders into one big collider. If you don't know what a collider is, it's a part which collides. You're welcome for the explanation. So let's build it for my phone. And it runs at 10 FPS. After definitely not days of work, I found out this composite collider was actually the cause of my pain. If you build with it, you update the whole massive collider, which takes the time to calculate the shape. And if I disable it, it only calculates the single cubes every time with no need to change the whole shape. Now the player does sometimes get stuck in blocks, but I mean, no one will notice, right? It's time for the final magic touch. Adding colors to the weapons. And as we're done, I'm publishing the whole game to Google Play. Stony Duels sounds like an ideal name, but orange, there aren't any stones in the game. Ahem! So, I named my game Stony Duels. 
If you'd like to play it, it's all free and I left the link in the description. If many of you guys don't like the game, I might think of adding a few more weapons to the game. Kick the stones, drink your orange juice, bye.